Welcome to a refresher course in stormwater pollution prevention. This module specifically covers illicit discharge detection, illicit connections, and discharge elimination. The concepts and messages included in this training apply to any municipal separate storm sewer system permit, also known as an MS4 permit. All MS4 permits are regulated under the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES, regulations. This training was created by Orange County, who shares the responsibility for protecting surface water from polluted stormwater with several co-permittees, including the cities of Apopka, Belle Isle, Maitland, Winter Garden, Ocoee, Winter Park, Edgewood, the Town of Eatonville, the Valencia Water Control District, and Florida's Department of Transportation. Why am I taking this training? If you are taking this training, you need to know how to prevent pollution that could enter lakes, rivers, and ponds through stormwater systems. This is so your organization can comply with the MPDES regulations that apply to MS4 permit holders. This training is for municipal employees and contractors working for municipalities. Employees and contractors are expected to be alert for illicit connections and suspicious flows during routine maintenance activities particularly in areas with high-risk facilities. The state of Florida directs organizations that hold an NPDES permit to provide training annually, and that training must educate about types of facilities that are subject to multi-sector generic permit requirements, or MSGP requirements, and activities that could cause pollution. When you complete this course, you should know what an illicit discharge is, what an illicit connection is, and what constitutes improper disposal. You should also know how to prevent discharges at your work sites and how to respond when one is unexpectedly discovered. Reporting discharges properly is important and ensures that effective remedies can be implemented quickly. The MS4 permit holder is responsible for seeking compliance or, if necessary, taking enforcement against the party responsible for the discharge. The photo at the left depicts an example of an illicit discharge where a commercial operation is discharging waste through a pipe into a swale. The swale is part of the MS4 or stormwater system that is maintained by the municipality. Understanding three definitions will help with MS4 compliance. When discharges are considered illicit, it's because MS4s are not designed to accept, process, or discharge such non-stormwater wastes. The NPDES regulations define an illicit discharge as any discharge to an MS4 that is not composed entirely of stormwater. There are exceptions, however, and these include discharges from NPDES permitted industrial sources and discharges from firefighting activities. An illicit connection is typically a direct connection to the MS4 through a conveyance, such as a pipe that allows non-stormwater to be discharged to the storm drain system. Illicit connections might be pronounced, meaning that they're direct hookups to the MS4, or they can be subtle connections that are indirect and intermittent. The term improper disposal covers any activity where non-stormwater is introduced into the MS4, and the disposal could be either intentional or accidental. We care about illicit discharges because stormwater pollution can flow into our surface water bodies every time it rains. Orange County has 12 watersheds inhabited by 1.2 million people and are made up of more than 600 named water bodies that include springs, creeks, ponds, rivers, and lakes. With clean surface water comes higher property values, healthier communities, and lower costs to municipalities that are able to spend less money on removing pollution from their MS4. For example, removing one pound of phosphorus from the environment can cost up to $50,000. The consequences of stormwater pollution are expensive. In addition to monetary penalties from the Department of Environmental Protection for noncompliance, the cost of reducing pollutant loads and cleaning up impaired waters in Orange County is estimated at $80 million per year.
National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Goals When NPDES was created as part of the Clean Water Act, the main goals were to protect water quality, minimize pollution, and educate citizens and businesses about how everyday activities can pollute our waterways. Probably the most useful tool to come out of the NPDES legislation is the establishment of best management practices. These provide guidelines for preventing pollution before it becomes a problem. As this cartoon illustrates, every time it rains, the runoff picks up contaminants from our built environment as it flows over ground. A few examples of pollution sources include landscaping that's treated with fertilizer and pesticides, roads and parking lots that have hosted leaky vehicles, commercial facilities that use chemicals, construction sites with loose dirt and debris, and farming operations that create animal waste. Preventing pollution through a well-maintained stormwater system is much easier and cost-effective than cleaning it up after contamination has already occurred. So what are some common stormwater pollutants? Litter is one. Sometimes litter comes from trash trucks or garbage cans that get knocked over. We also have pesticides that are sprayed on landscaping and lawns, oils from roads and parking lots, and grease from dumpster areas behind food courts and restaurants. Sewage and gray water from homes that have septic systems are also a pollution source. Gray water is the wastewater that comes from your laundry, kitchen appliances, bathroom faucets, baths, and showers. Chemicals from landscaping, such as fertilizer, pressure cleaning water when soaps or bleaches are used, and industrial chemicals from businesses such as auto repair shops, salvage yards, and dry cleaners are pollution sources. Improperly disposed household chemicals include paint, motor oil, cleaning products, and other chemicals that you might find in your garage. Even soil can be a pollutant to water bodies, and it runs off from construction sites, yard debris processing sites, and other dusty operations. Any commercial or industrial pollution source that can potentially threaten county water sources requires a multi-sector generic permit, or an MSGP. Examples of facilities that will require an MSGP might be an auto salvage yard, scrap recycler, or a construction site. Complying with an MSGP would require the following information, the type of facility, the type of activity taking place, what type of internal auditing protocols there are, what pollution prevention best management practices are in use, and how staff and contractors are educated about compliance with the MSGP requirements. This slide shows some of the major permit requirements as broken down into general categories as listed on the slide. There are 14 major categories of compliance activities that are outlined in an MS4 permit. The first one being maintenance. This includes inspection, maintenance, and inventory of the MS4. That includes all the canals, ditches, ponds, pipes, outfalls, etc. It includes roadway maintenance, litter control, and street sweeping. It also involves incorporating stormwater treatment into flood control projects, limiting sanitary discharges, and making sure that stormwater treatment is required for development projects. Another component is inspections. Inspection of municipal waste treatment and storage facilities that are not already covered by their own NPDES permit. Proactive and reactive illicit discharge inspection programs. An industrial and high-risk runoff inspection program and a construction site runoff inspection program. 
Monitoring is required. This involves auditing records and protocols to ensure that compliance is being supported. Training and education component covers both public and county staff. The public outreach and education component involves proper pesticide and fertilizer use, illicit discharges and public reporting, proper management and disposal of oils, toxics, and household hazardous waste. Training of county staff involves illicit discharge detection and elimination, spill prevention and response, and construction site erosion and sediment control training. Annual reporting to FDEP or the Florida Department of Environmental Protection involves accounting of all activities during the permit year, the status of your monitoring program, and the assessment of your program's effectiveness. As part of NPDES compliance, MS4 permit holders must perform inspections of commercial facilities that are typical pollution sources. While inspections also involve record keeping, most of the investigation will focus on operations and equipment. The image in this slide shows green dye being used to trace the origin and destination of discharges from an industrial facility. This slide shows you what an illicit discharge looks like. An illicit discharge might include deliberate dumping, incidental runoff of chemicals, raw materials, yard debris, or even soil, or basically any discharge that isn't uncontaminated stormwater runoff. The image on the left is a picture of grass clippings that have been allowed to go onto the gutter and will wash into the storm drain if they're not cleaned up. The image on the right shows latex paint that's being allowed to run down the gutter into the storm drain. Not all stormwater discharges are regulated. Here are a few examples of exceptions. Air conditioning condensate, uncontaminated groundwater, water line flushing water, irrigation water, discharges from potable water sources, foundation drains, water from crawl space pumps, dechlorinated swimming pool discharges, individual residential car wash water, and street wash water. Preventing illicit discharges helps you avoid enforcement, and the best way to do this is audit your operations for compliance. Keep your staff and your contractors well trained, and make sure that everybody knows what your expectations are while they're working on your site. Have a budget so that you can pay for any discharges when they occur, Keep the equipment well maintained and inspect it so that you can see problems before they actually occur. Ensure that spill cleanup materials are available that match the types of chemicals being used on site. And teach your people how to use the spill kits properly. It's always a great idea to already contract with an emergency responder in the event that you need to call one out and simulate likely situations and conduct response drills so that people know what their responsibilities are in the event of an emergency. Stay alert for common signs of noncompliance. The items listed on this slide are also things that an inspector might look for when they come to your site. Stains on the pavement might indicate that there's been a spill or maybe leaking equipment. Stressed or dead vegetation also could show that something has been getting poured onto the ground that shouldn't be. Open chemical containers are always a no-no because if they're stored haphazardly outside, they could easily fill with rainwater and spill. The containers could also become compromised and allow things to leak out of the containers over time. Discoloration in water bodies means that something could have been discharged there. Liquid that's ponding in an area that might be dry normally or should be dry. 
Lack of documentation for proper disposal shows that if there's no records of where the waste went, then maybe it wasn't managed properly in the first place. Soapy or colored water flowing from culverts. That could be maybe a laundry that's discharging through an illicit connection. Any strange odor that an inspector might notice, make sure that you're paying attention to that too. When you see an illicit discharge, please report it immediately. The good news is that Orange County makes reporting easy with a 311 system that also comes as an app for smartphones. When you make a report using the 311 app, it allows you to take a photo, map it to your location, and add a description of the report. When you submit the report, a date and a time stamp are assigned. You can even submit the complaint anonymously. When adding the description, please include identifiers such as building names, vehicle license plate, vehicle color, make, or model, and if any workers were present at the scene. Complaints received from incorporated jurisdictions will be forwarded to the appropriate jurisdiction. That means that if Orange County receives a complaint that actually was taking place in the city of Orlando, the 311 operator will forward the complaint to the appropriate person in the city of Orlando. On this slide are some great compliance resources that you can seek out when you have questions about NPDES compliance. Thank you very much for taking this training. Keeping pollution out of Florida's waters will take a vigilant, coordinated effort as our population continues to grow and stress our natural resources. But working together, we can make a difference in the health of our water bodies and leave a wonderful legacy for future generations of Floridians and visitors.